Welcome to the Laser Channel, I'm Greg, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Jakoda Air Assist Kit that fits 95% of the machines on the market today. Stay tuned to find out more. This box was shipped to me inside of another shipping box. That other shipping box looks like this. And I do like it when the manufacturers ship their product inside of another box. It really makes sure that that product arrives to the doorstep safe and sound and ready to open. I'm pretty excited to check this box out. And I'm greeted first by some protective foam on the top, followed up by a series of instructions and we'll take a look at those in a little bit. And here's all the pieces and parts. The first thing that I note is everything is surrounded uh, essentially by foam and everything is packed in tight, meaning that in shipping, none of the parts can move around scratching or damaging their neighbor. So the first part out of the box is the air nozzle and some other air fittings for the uh, next to the laser air nozzle, I'll show you what that looks like. Some air tubing, the power pack to power the air pump. And this is the clip-on for the, uh, I call it the next to the laser air assist kit. Some more foam, and yet more air foam, and finally the main pump. A couple of the main features that I really like about this unit already is it is compact and it does have a speed controller on it. There are certain times when I'm cutting through material, I want to run the airflow as high as possible. And then other times I might be cutting a thin paper product and I want just a whisper of air so the, the cutout paper does not interfere with other cutouts of that same project. The bottom side does have some rubber pads so that as the machine's running, it will not walk away. It'll just stay in place and it helps keep the noise down. For the technical specs of this kit, there's a couple main things that I'm concerned about. Primarily, I like to know the airflow out of the machine and that is 15 liters per minute. Uh, a lot of these on the market are 30 liters per minute. So it'll be interesting to see the test cutout near the end of this project to see what 15 liters per minute can do. Other testing that I've done in the past shows that you just need some type of airflow in there. So I think this will perform well, but the test will show us that. The other thing is that as previously mentioned, this unit does claim to be compatible with 95% of the machines currently on the market, whether the air nozzle attaches directly to the lens or this is a clip-on air nozzle. There's another air nozzle that will come in from the side with the laser beam coming straight down and this will blow air into the material where the laser beam is engraving or cutting. Currently at the time of the filming of this video, this kit costs about $90 and you can save even more when it is bundled with a laser machine. I have my X-Tool 10 watt laser machine. This is the non-pro machine. I'll start by removing the laser module from the carrier. This is also a good time to check if your lens does need to be cleaned. Now is a perfect opportunity to do that. I checked mine off camera and it is clean. Inside this parts bag with the air nozzle specifically for the X-Tool or any machine that has the diameter that fits uh, inside of here, the diameter of the lens assembly. It also includes the Allen wrench and the set screw to hold the air nozzle in place. I'm going to start that set screw just a little bit, make sure that it threads in correctly. And following the included directions, I'll place this nozzle on, make sure that everything is straight and it's seated all the way down. It's a nice tight fit without any wiggle room. I'll snug this up and that part, which is the hardest part, is already complete. Next comes the air tubing. Air 
And the manufacturers typically give you ample supply of the airline tubing until I have my setup just the way I like it. I like to keep this the full length. You certainly get a little bit better performance if you cut this down to length for your specific application in the space that you're working in. When installing the air tubing into the fitting, I always like to rest my hand underneath that air fitting while I insert the tubing in. This reduces the chance of breaking off this air fitting into the air nozzle and putting any undue strain on some of the lens assemblies on the laser module. With that quick, easy step out of the way, it's time for some airline management. And by that, I mean we want to make sure that this laser machine can move where it needs to and not pull tight on the airline along with having the airline draped down in the work area and have the laser machine cut over the top of the airline. Inside this other parts bag are two twist ties. I'm going to use one or two of those to secure the airline to the cable going up to the laser module. Just leave that on there nice and loose for now. And one more over at this back attachment point onto the gantry. And from my other air assist kit, I do have some of my own twist ties that I use. I change all configurations on my laser machines quite a bit to make these videos and also for my own personal projects. So having these twist ties rather than zip ties works out really well. It allows me to move and replace parts as needed for my needs. And the next easy step is just to take the end of the airline and plug that into the air pump. Now this is some Nice, soft, and supple, flexible airline tubing, making sure that nothing is kinked. And lastly, it's just time to plug in the power pack. I have the power pack plugged into a power strip. Let's take this air assist kit for a test drive. And I can turn this on. I don't know if you can hear it with the microphone, but there's just a soft chug of air coming out of the air nozzle. and I can turn that up much higher. And there's definitely some air force coming out of that air nozzle. I think this is going to perform very well for us. With that successful test drive of the air assist kit that was an easy install on this X-Tool machine, I'm going to finish connecting the power supply up to my X-Tool machine, grab my laptop computer, jump in light burn, and I'm going to make a simple design of engraving and cutting and see just how well this kit installed on the X-Tool D1 performs using the Jakoda Air Assist Kit. I have the X-Tool machine set up, all the power and communications are set up, and I have my exhaust kit set up off to the side. Normally I have an enclosure on here, but for these videos I keep that off so that all of you viewers can see all the action going on. I've also installed my honeycomb with the sheet metal backer board to protect my nice tabletop. Placing my workpiece in the work bed area and I get a lot of questions on how do you make sure that this is squared up and what I like to do is take a piece of straight project wood and I will move my gantry frame forward and I use this block of wood against this square gantry frame and I push my workpiece material up against that. Keeping light pressure on the top, I'll remove this straight board and I'll box in my material with these magnets. I can move the gantry crane out of the way and continue building this little fence of magnets around my project wood. There, that's all nice and square. And if I'm running multiples, I can leave all the magnets in place and take out the completed project piece and replace a new material blank in its place and continue on. With that covered, I'm going to move my laser into the starting position. That looks good. 
Inside Lightburn, I drew a simple text, uh, Jakota, along with this border with some nice rounded corners around it. The engraving will be done at 85 millimeters per second at 65% power, and the cut will be done at four millimeters per second at 100%. These aren't perfectly optimized, but for this video, it will demonstrate the engraving and cutting with the Jakota Air Assist Kit. I've set the focus of the laser. I framed it out to make sure that the laser moves over my entire workpiece. I made sure that what I want to engrave is fill and what I want to cut out is a line. This all looks good. I'm going to turn on the exhaust fan. With the exhaust fan on and the Chakota air pump at full speed, a set of safety goggles and I'm ready to start. This project going under the preview button will take about three minutes. All complete, I can turn off the air pump. And that cut out in one pass. I'll go up to the main camera here and we'll get a close up view of this. How about that? Nice detail. There's no smoke residue around the outsides and the edges all look good. And the backside, because I'm using honeycomb, I don't have any smoke residue or burn through on the backside. So I think even at the lower airflow of 15 meters per minute, that's still plenty of air for this to perform as needed to produce great results. This is a great little project demonstrating the capabilities of the Jakota Air Assist Kit. I think it performed very well, primarily on the cutout of this on both the front and the back side. As a general practice, when we engrave while using an air assist kit, we'll greatly reduce the airflow. That way, any smoke coming off, we don't blow that onto the material next to the engraving. For this video, to keep things sped up, I did it all at the same time at the air setting. But for you, I'd invite you to do the engraving first at a lower air setting using the variable speed and then going back at the full air speed of the air pump to do the final cutout. Thank you for watching. As usual, I had a lot of fun making this video for you. If you found this informative and useful for you, I'd invite you to like or leave a comment down below along with ringing the notification bell. Doing any number of these things really helps the channel out and it helps others like you get connected with content like this. Until next time, learn, share, and create.